Okay, my last video, I compared DeepSeek V3.2 and Claude Opus 4.5 across two tests, writing a PRD and then building a space dashboard app from that PRD. Opus came out on top and this is the version that it built. The UI is really clean, it's professional and it nailed the brief with only really one or two minor bugs. Someone commented on that video, Sam Miller 9855 saying it would be interesting to see what DeepSeek could build if it used the Opus PRD instead of its own. And that's a really good point. So in this video, I'm giving DeepSeek another chance at the build, but this time using the full Opus PRD. If you want to see the detailed PRD comparison and the original builds, I'll link that video in the description and in the top right corner. But just for context, DeepSeek created a very brief PRD in that test without a lot of detail, whereas Opus produced a really complete production-ready version. And that could be a big reason why Opus did a better job on the build. So the question is, with a more detailed PRD, the Opus version, can DeepSeek build a better space dashboard? And we're not stopping there. We're also adding another model into the mix, GPT 5.1 Codex Max. So both DeepSeek and Codex are getting the exact same PRD, the Opus PRD. And we'll not only see if DeepSeek can build a better dashboard with more information and a more detailed PRD, we'll also see how Codex Max goes, if it can build not only a better space dashboard app, than DeepSeek, but also we'll compare it to the Opus version on screen and use this as a reference point. And just for a bit more context before we do jump in, this is the original space dashboard that DeepSeek v3.2 created, again using that more brief and shorter PRD. So it'll be interesting to also compare to this to see how it goes with the build. So we'll jump over now and just have a refresh, another look at the PRD that we're going to be using for the build, and then we'll jump in and we'll test both models. Okay, so let's quickly have a look at the PRD that Opus created in that first test video, the one we're going to be using in this test. I won't run through it in too much detail. If you want to have a full in-depth look at the PRD, you can check out the previous test video where I go into a lot more detail. But what we have here is a really detailed PRD, executive summary, problem statement, goals and objectives, some target user information, really detailed feature requirements, some architecture design, UI and UX requirements, technical specifications. So we've got all the API endpoints we need to use to create the dashboard. And we've also got a recommended tech stack. So both models will use the same tech stack in this test, React 18 plus TypeScript for the main framework. And importantly, we also have a development roadmap, which you can see here. So that's breaking down the project into tasks, which is really important when you're using a PRD to start a project, risks and mitigations. And finally, we have some future considerations and an appendix section. So a really detailed PRD. We'll jump over and throw this at our models and see how they go with the build. Okay, we're in cursor now. We've got our workspaces set up here in split screen. On the left hand side, you can see I've got Klein set up with the DeepSeek v3.2 API connected. And on the right hand side, we've got Codex set up within the Codex extension in Cursor. We're using GPT 5.1 Codex Max as our model. And for reasoning, we're using extra high. So we should get the best possible result from Codex using these settings. And again, what I've done is just copy pasted the full PRD across from Claude. We'll hit enter and we'll see how they go with the build process and then we'll test the dashboards in dev mode. Okay, both models have completed the build. Codex took 18 minutes to finish the build. On the other hand, DeepSeek took about 40 minutes. It did get stuck a few times and I had to just cancel and prompt it to say, please continue with the task. So I'm not sure if that's an API connection issue or a client issue. It didn't happen on the first test video with DeepSeek. So Maybe that is an API thing and not a DeepSeek thing, but it did take a bit longer to complete the build. We'll now jump over to dev mode and have a look at both dashboards. Okay, here is the DeepSeek v3.2 version of the space dashboard that has been built from the Opus PRD. We can see the UI and design overall looks a bit better. Some of this font and formatting could be improved. I think the font here is just a bit too big. But from an actual design perspective, I think the background and the widgets and the title look like an improvement. We can see the ISS tracker is still loading. We've got our astronomy picture of the day here, which is also looks like it's broken, the image. If we scroll down, we'll see some of those formatting issues I mentioned. We can see here this text is just a bit hard to read and obviously too large, which is causing the formatting issue here. 
So that's probably just a CSS issue we would need to look at and fix. We can see upcoming events timeline here at the bottom as well. Then we've got data sources and an about section at the bottom. But from just a UI and design perspective, I think it looks all right. But as I said, we'd have to go back and just fix the formatting. I think that would improve it a lot if we went and did those changes. Let's now quickly jump back over to the original DeepSeq v3.2 version. This was the one built from the more basic DeepSeq PRD. We can see there are no formatting issues here. It's actually very similar as well in terms of the layout where it's got three widgets at the bottom here and the map and the picture of the day at the top. So it has built it very similarly. The design is the difference. And I think that formatting again, as I mentioned, would definitely make it a bit different, but it has executed the build. It did take a bit longer, as I said, and ran into a few issues and potentially this formatting is a reason for that. So maybe because the PRD we provided was so detailed and so in depth that that has potentially contributed to this issue. So one possible workaround might be to break the PRD down into tasks. So you could prompt Opus to break that down into modules and then ask DeepSeq to build the module one by one. That might be a better way to go. It might have been overwhelmed with the amount of information we provided up front in the PRD for one prompt. But that's a look at the DeepSeq v3.2 version and also compared to the original DeepSeq version. Let's now jump over and see how Codex did. Okay, here is the Codex version of the Space dashboard. We can see we've got kind of a mission control section at the top that has the time, some information about the crew and the next launch. We've also then got our ISS live tracker, so we can see its location here and the same sort of interactive map as we saw on the Opus version. We've also got the coordinates and then information about the crew on board. If we scroll down further, we can see the astronomy picture of the day widget next. These images also look broken, so potentially that's an API or caching issue that we could fix. But the widget itself looks pretty clean from a UI perspective. Further down, we can then see the space events calendar, near Earth object monitor, and the space weather. Straight away, we can see an issue here with the formatting where everything's sort of squeezed into this section here, and the text is sort of just one word per line, which is a clear issue in terms of the UI and design. So it would have to fix that. That's an issue we would have to debug. There's also then a lot of empty space due to all of the information on the left creating this empty space on the other two widgets. So that's another issue. It obviously hasn't nailed the layout of how these three sections would best work together. We've then got the upcoming events timeline at the bottom and then the data sources at the footer. So that's the Codex version. It's very similar again to the DeepSeq version in terms of the layout. It has not exactly nailed this middle section here with some of this formatting. It doesn't look great and there's empty space and the the images aren't loading here, which is another issue. The ISS tracker section is good. It's done a good job with that, as well as the mission control section at the top here. If we jump back over to the Opus 4.5 version that we built in the original test video, it's clear that this is by far the best build of all of the builds we've looked at. It nailed the UI design and the API integrations. All the features work and it looks really clean and modern. So Opus 4.5 again comes out on top when we compare that to both the DeepSeq v3.2 version with a more detailed PRD and also compared to GPT 5.1 Codex Max. So I hope you enjoyed that video where we've now compared DeepSeq v3.2 not only to GPT 5.1 Codex Max but also Opus 4.5 and we've also had a good look at how DeepSeq v3.2 works with both a basic PRD and a more detailed one. If you want to see more model comparison and test videos like this, make sure you subscribe and thanks for watching.